a generative fill black background. Boom, and there it was. Does it. Amazing. Yeah. Five seconds. I think it's good thing and bad thing because okay. I think if the clients start finding out that there's this thing available, they're going to start asking us just to Photoshop that out all the time. Yeah. Which is great. <laughs> Can you put um, me on a volcano? Yeah. <laughs> hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Shoot the Veil podcast. Today, we have one of my good friends and fellow photographers, Alyssa Jeans, on the podcast. She's a member of the Shoot the Veil, Shoot the Veil community and was one of the very first in our beta launch. And so we're really excited to have her here today. I'm your host, Sam. This is Donnie. And we're ready to dive into it and just to learn a little bit more about you, Alyssa, and what you do. So excited. Yeah, absolutely. So tell me how you got started into the wedding photography industry. So I've always taken photos, like my entire life. I've always had a camera. My mom's always had a camera. But it wasn't really until my senior year of high school um, we, I, took a, I took a class in high school, and so we had to job shadow someone. I chose to job shadow a photographer, um, which, you know, most people would be like, well, that's silly. Why would you do that? That's not really a career. Um, <laughs> so I, I looked around at photographers. I had a hard time finding somebody who I really liked in the southern Illinois community. A lot of barns, not really what I'm used to in Memphis. Mm. So I did end up finding somebody. She specialized in newborn and wedding photography. So I did a whole day of newborn and cake smash sessions with her. Wow. So um, I guess you could say I started out in the newborn industry. That's <laughs> cool. That's which a, is nowhere near where I am now. Yeah, it's funny because <laughs> that's, that's a great little business model is to be able to go straight from weddings to the baby. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Just yeah. it's a year right. between, that's returning clients Absolutely. right there. Absolutely. <laughs> right. So I did a whole day of newborns and cake smashes with her, and it was a lot of fun. I think we instantly clicked. Um, and then by the end of the day, she was like, hey, have you ever done a wedding before? And I was like, I have never even been to a wedding. I am 17 years old. I don't know what a wedding even is. <laughs> yes. um, so she was like, okay, well, I have this wedding this weekend. Um, it is Hispanic Catholic. And I was like, okay, cool. Yeah. Sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, got to the wedding. I used her gear this day because I had a Nikon at the time and she shoots with Canon. So we did the first wedding completely on a Canon and she let me play around with all her gear. Two hour ceremony, yep, about yep. 10 hours of dancing. Yeah. So it was a very, very interesting first wedding. Yeah, wow. <laughs> definitely. Oh, we've, we've had those and I love, I love the Catholic Hispanic weddings. Yeah. For the reason that they're so like intimate, you know what I mean? But they are a lot of work. Yeah. They're a lot of work. I mean, it was, it was pretty cool for it being like my first wedding ever. Right. Right. So after that wedding, we just really hit it off. And she was like, look, I would love to have you at more weddings. Go buy yourself a Canon. Wow. And so I was like, <laughs> okay. Um, you know, I got my first little paycheck, bought myself a camera yeah. and eventually, you know, just kept collecting more Canon gear as it went on. And I think I shot about every wedding with her for a whole year to two years. Wow. And was and this in then, Illinois? Yes, it was in Illinois. So I grew up in Memphis, little backstory, but I moved away to Illinois. And I lived in Illinois for almost four years. And then I moved back to Memphis um, just because the city life is for me. This mm. The cornfields were not it. <laughs> yeah. But it sounds like that one little like baby session day was yeah. your job interview. Pretty and she's much. like, okay, this girl's kind of awesome. Why don't you come help me on Saturday? Right. And then she every Saturday me, from force. then on. What do you think she was seeing? Because I think a lot of our, our members actually are second shooters. Um, well, a lot of us second shoot. And yeah. it's a good way to practice, a good way to build your portfolio. But what did she see in you as a second shooter that she's like, I got to have you back. Keep coming. You know, that's the thing. See, I have no idea. I would just say <laughs> I think my personality takes me a long way. And then my eye, my attention to detail um, at the time, I was just a 17-year-old with a Nikon camera shooting senior pictures for basically free for all my friends. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, I had never really thought about making a career out of it until probably about three years ago. I thought I would just kind of assist forever in a mm. way because I loved, like, assisting. Um, and then I was like, you know what? I think it's time for me to do this on my own. I think I've done this for long enough. Let's jump right in. Yeah. It was so, how long awesome. of second shooting? I second shot with her for a full year, and then yeah. she ended up getting pregnant, having a baby. So she tossed all her weddings onto another photographer, and then that photographer was like, hey, can you second shoot for me? And wow. I was like, sure. So I second shot with her for another full year, and then moved back to Memphis, tried to second shoot, had a really, really hard time finding okay. mm. photographers, a really hard time. Wow. Yeah. 
So in Illinois, in the barn world, there's there's barn. not a lot of second <laughs> shooters. Like, wow, this girl's actually good. She shows up on time. She's got a good eye. She's got a great personality. Mm -hmm. You want her at your wedding. In Memphis, you get here like, hey, I'm this person. Yeah. And everybody said no. Yeah, and I think... Um, Why is that? You know, I want to say it was the difference between the city trending creativity and then the barn weddings. Mm. A lot of the weddings I was doing at the time were not up to Memphis photographer standards maybe. So my portfolio wasn't as a pleasing, it wasn't as pleasing I should say yeah. to a lot of photographers. And also I'm just a new person. They think I'm just an amateur with a camera. Right. You know, little do they know I've probably shot more weddings than they have. Right. That's so, so funny because you're, yeah. you're looking at your stuff now and your name, you're a, you're a Memphis OG, like, and <laughs> you're. I mean, everybody, everyone knows Alyssa Jean's photography. Yeah. And she's you're it's crazy. This girl is always on a shoot, and that's how we kind of met. Is through, we were always somehow at the same location, same place at the same time, same place always. at the same time. We're like, what's up? It's just another Tuesday night taking a engagement, yeah. and so. Long story short, Alyssa is always somewhere doing something, and it's yeah. awesome. And your name is she's through the roof here in Memphis. And that, that's awesome. So tell me a little more about um, how exactly, so you, you were running to this problem. Okay, I have mm -hmm. I have barn portfolio and I wanna get in with the, the industry here. What were some mm -hmm. things that, um, maybe you know this, maybe you don't. What were some things that you did to help get you to where you are now here in Memphis and I mean, in your local city? So eventually I just started following photographers on Instagram and just started reaching out the best way I could. Step one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you're looking to second shoot, I would have to say that's the way to go. And if they say yes, that's great. If they say no, they're not for you. And mm -hmm. I had to learn that. I had to learn it's not me. It's because they don't trust me. You have to find a photographer that will trust you, that will allow you, that will help come in and take you on almost as a mentor. Mm, yes. So I think that's the, you know, that's the scariest part because even I myself get messages all the time from these photographers who have 10 photos on their page and they're like, hey, I'd love to second shoot for you. Yeah. And it's such a scary thing on a wedding. Like, sure, you can second shoot, but maybe come to a session with me first. Let right. me make sure you understand what you're doing yeah. just in case. Because as a second shooter, you're not only a second camera, you're a backup. Yeah. So if anything were to happen to me, I have to be able to fully trust my second shooter to yeah. step in. Have you ever heard of or or anyone ever reached out to you like, hey, I'll come shoot for free. I just want to show you what I can do. I haven't, no. I've seen people do, and I actually encourage some people to do, I'm a third shooter. Mm -hmm. I'll show up, just let me shoot. I'll show up for free and show you that my stuff is good and you like me at your wedding and they're not paying you and there's no risk because they already have their second shooter. Have you ever heard of that? No, nope, never heard of that. Hey, but that's a smart way that's to like- That's ballsy, but I like it though. Yeah, you that's a I mean? smart way to figure out how to work with who you want to work with. Yeah. So if as a professional photographer, you're sort of at the top now, if someone came to you and said, I am available for the whole month of June or for the whole month of October, I know you're insane. I have a camera, these are my lenses. I would love to come just show you that I can shoot alongside you. Would oh, you say absolutely. Yes? Yeah, I'm all for that. Yeah, See, I, I think I'm, I'm all for that because that was once me. Yeah. Mm. So I think, you know, why not give them a shot? Yeah. At the top, you're when you get these, hey, I'll be your second shooter, you're like, yeah, I don't have time to train you. I don't have time to do this. I'm not going to pay you to for me to train you. I'm not going to show you all my stuff. But a third shooter, maybe. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I like that. And maybe maybe that's not the term they've used, but yeah. I've definitely had those those DMs and and you know it's and going back to you know, okay you have ten photos on your page and yes they are your friends and this is not an insult to anyone watching you are doing great and keep doing mm -hmm. that matter right. of fact keep doing it every day if you yeah. can because that's what's going to make you better and you can go and watch courses and, and watch these YouTube videos but experience speaks the loudest and um, yeah. just like you said it, it's it is your backup it's your insurance policy what your second shooter um, and I think you know. When, when we're looking for the second shooters, we want someone we can trust. And it's also, you know, how, are you doing this? How are you doing this? And so it's good to be able to look at their Instagram and say, okay, you have 10 photos, but you, I need to see, I need to see some more mm. seriousness right. out of you. Cause I've had second shooters that 
I wish I never had, you know, I wish I never had. And so yeah. now it's like, I only go to people who are really serious about it. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you're watching this and you're wanting to get into that world, keep doing what you're doing, keep building your portfolio as much as you can. Um, Cause that will, you know, that'll get you second shooting gigs. I'm gonna add a, add a little piece to that. Cause I think yeah. this is important. We, I've seen it with young shooters. They put a ton of pictures and when I'm looking through considering should they come along with me, if I see 50 pictures or 500 pictures and I'm unimpressed by several, I'm moving on. I don't have time to figure out, are you really good? And these were just kind of bad ones or like, I don't have time to evaluate. But if I look through your portfolio and I'm, I'm seeing 10 or 20 amazing pictures. Yeah. I mean, yeah. so I think, uh, editing Quality out over quantity. all the bad stuff is yeah. really important. But I think a lot of people in their first few shoots, they just post a ton of pictures, whether they're good Makes or bad. Sense. Yeah. And yeah. it kind of dilutes the me. impact. <laughs> that was me. That's uh, yeah, yeah. We probably all do it yeah. in our first couple of years. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So that editing down your portfolio is actually a huge piece. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So your second shooting with um, this girl from Illinois, and then you move over and you have another person you're second shooting with. What happens when you decide, okay, I want to do this now as my thing, as my career? What Did was you that decide switch? or were you pushed well, yeah. into it? Or like, how did you it? jump? Honestly, I was kind of pushed into it in a way. Um, I quickly realized it was really hard to get in with the Memphis industry. And I had to find my people. Mm -hmm. I did. So once I found my people and second shot with them, I became a little bit more confident. Mm -hmm. And as I was getting older, I was like, okay, I think I can do this. So one day I lost my job. I was working <laughs> a eight to five at Mercedes in Collierville. And as I was there, it was, it was a great job, but I would go straight from work to a photo shoot, home to edit, to sleep, back to work, to a photo shoot. Mm. I mean, this was an everyday thing. I, mm -hmm. I had sessions almost every day as I still yeah. do now, because yeah. I cannot say no. But <laughs> um, it was becoming one of these things where it's like, you know, it, it's hard for you to make that jump into photography being a full-time career. Mm -hmm. My biggest, scare was really just, okay, well, what am I going to do during the slow months, January, February, June, July, like these months where maybe we're not as busy as like the fall and the spring. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's someone who didn't really take on many weddings either. Mm -hmm. So I was booking weddings, but I maybe only had about five at the time. Once I got laid off from my job and I started just posting social media every day, just connecting with different photographers, really saying, hey, I'd love to come second shoot. Um, I would get in with them, meet them. They'd love me. The bridal party would follow me on Instagram. They loved mm. me. So eventually word of mouth and social media blew up my business. And then the first year of my career, I had 30 weddings ish, you know, minus like a little elopements and things. Okay, so then, get so laid that, off. Say that again. Yeah. You got how many weddings? In my first year, I had about 30 weddings, like in 2022, I think. Yeah. Wow. Or in 2023. That's insane. That's crazy. Yeah. No, everybody I wishes was, they could get <laughs> that many. Yeah, that's full-time pro I was definitely success. in over my head at first. I said yes to just about anything, every wedding that came my way, just because I love weddings. I love this job, and I love meeting new people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And each time I would do a wedding, I would meet more people. And then those people would hire me in. Domino so effect. that's, it yeah. was, yeah, the domino effect. Yeah. And so that's how my first year in the wedding industry went for me. Yeah. Wow. So that's amazing. So you said that you went in and you said you started following these photographers. Yeah. And then also you're taking your, so your social media seriously. How are you doing that? What was something, some tricks? Tips and tricks, if you will, mm -hmm. when growing your social media, what were some like active things? I'm going to do this so that this happens. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, I do a lot of behind the scenes. So mm -hmm. I whip out my iPhone at almost every session. I try to, if I didn't, I was probably just too in the moment, but I typically whip out my iPhone at every session, just take a little video of what I'm doing. You know, the couple, me posing them, them acting as if they normally would. Yeah. And I would post these videos like every day the clients would share them on their story and be like, we had the best time with Alyssa Jean's photography. And then their friends would follow me. So it was really all just Instagram. 
I grew about a thousand to maybe fifteen hundred in a whole year yeah. following. That's great. So my following grew very, very quickly. That's great. Yeah. 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 And these are organic, real life people who are interested yeah. in your world. They're not yeah. just random people. That's yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. And I've connected with a lot of these people. Sometimes they follow me and then they see me out in public and they're like, Hey, you're Alyssa Dean's photography. Yeah. And I'm like, Yeah, that's me. Like it's crazy, but it's cool, you know? Yeah, it's a good feeling. Yeah. It can be intimidating at times. But it's yes, also very, yeah, we yeah. talked about that. It's like it's a cool feeling, but then you realize Oh wait, am I, am I the grocery store? What's someone recognizing me? And I'm in my pajamas. Right. <laughs> oh yeah, you know? oh, yeah. It's huge. Oh, okay, man. well I want to go back though because everybody heard that thought. Oh, that's really cool. I'm gonna post more video. Like, go through exactly what you mean. Like, you're literally getting your iPhone out while you're shooting, holding. How are you holding everything? <laughs> oh yeah. You have a um, GoPro on your head. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean they do make these fancy things that you can set on your camera, and your iPhone can yeah. stick to it. You know. But for me personally, I felt like that was a little bit dorky. Um, it so, is. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. <laughs> Glad I don't do that. But yeah, I mean, I just pull out my iPhone. I mean, my sessions are not timed. I am not someone who says, okay, your 30 minutes is up. Goodbye. Um, good. So, I just kind of keep going within the moment. If it goes over 30 minutes, you know, it goes over 30 minutes. It is what it is. I try to stick to a pretty good timeline. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes it just happens towards the end. They open up a little bit more and maybe mm. we're getting more magic towards the end and we're just flowing off of poses and directions. So, mm -hmm. yes, I love it when that happens, because sometimes, you know, it's not moving or, you know, yeah. and, but then when you have that, that couple, it's just like, oh, it's just flowing. It's okay, always it's, it's been first. an hour and a half, but we're having fun. They're having a great time. I'm going to keep going. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, that's me personally, but I love that. That's so good. Um, so one way you really grew is through cross promoting, cross promoting through Instagram stories. Mm -hmm. So and basically you you tag your couple, they repost you, and they say a little sweet message. All of their followers uh, followers see it. Basically, yeah. And this is something I would never tell my followers to share it. It was just one of those things they no, did. Yeah. yeah. Because let's face it, we love social media. Or yeah, we do. We we love hyping up the local businesses whenever we have the chance to. Because when you invest in someone. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of cool. So yeah. you want to show it off. I mean, I myself, anytime I get my makeup done or my hair done, I'm always taking a picture and sharing it. Yeah. Because every little thing helps. I don't think people realize how much. Like, And then we want to be a part. We want to be yeah. able to help out. And that's just natural. And it's, thank God it is. I mean, it's awesome. I yeah. think that's really cool. Um, so you're doing that. And I think that's really cool. And it brings up something else. And it is basically identifying as a photographer. When you go somewhere, you're like, I am a photographer and I had this conversation with someone yesterday <laughs> like how do I how do I get my name out there and how do how do people start really accepting me for this job and one way is that you made your Instagram account and you're showing people this is what I do yeah and yeah yeah you're posting on your grid but you're also showing it every night I'm at the shoot because this is who I am this is my brand um, and I think that was something that also helped me in my photography business is when I shook someone's hand and they say what do you do I'm a photographer yeah Huge. And um, and it wasn't even, I'm trying to get into the photography world. Yeah. It's, uh, I am this now. Until you're that, I think when you are approached by somebody who may be getting married or if they're considering you, until yeah. you say that, they think you're the side hustle person. Right. And there's so many of those. Oh, yeah. yes. And even people that actually would consider themselves a photographer, if they have another job, they it's hard for them to say, this is what I am. Yeah. Did you find that when you were doing both at Mercedes and? I would say so, yes. I think my work really had to speak for itself. I'd tell people I was a photographer, but they didn't really think much of it. Mm -hmm. But it's like, you see my work and you're like, oh, she's she's a photographer, you yeah. know? Yeah. So I think a lot of times people underestimate photographers. Yes. They think it's just a side hustle, just a person with a camera. Because yeah. most people who say they're a photographer maybe aren't really a photographer, they're your uncle or something, you know? And if, so, if you're getting married and you, some people are actually looking for that because yeah. they want a deal. They oh, want, yeah. they want to pay somebody with a camera. Yeah, they've done a few weddings. Right. But when someone's ready to pay a large amount of money for a professional, your Instagram has to be full of weddings. You have to do weddings. Like this is what I do. Right. Even if you have a side job, now your Mercedes job becomes, that's like a side thing, but I'm a photographer. Yeah. And I think that headset or that mindset that you're talking about, Sam, is really important. It was. It was for me. And that's and that's what you're doing when you're showing your stories. I think that's I think that's really key. And that's why I brought yeah. it up. It's just because it's it's a huge part to be able to say, This is what I do. 
social mm-hmm. media social and media. word of mouth. That's what I tell people. I'm like, that's really it. And then yeah. I'd say your personality has a big play. Oh, yeah. So I've always been someone who's just can have a conversation with anybody. I am completely myself in a session. You know, I don't try to fake it, but I do try to match their energy a little bit more maybe. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. I want to dive into something that I think will help everybody. You're great at, at trends, at seeing social media, at yeah. leading trends, at, try to be. at helping people. <laughs> One of the things that's happening right now, or kind of the, the blurry, the fuzzy, the, the grainy, yeah. um, the non pose, like it's a, it feels very organic and real. We've seen it growing over the last year or so. You're pushing that. You're and you're you've even helped people do that very intentionally. Tell us a little bit about how you're experiencing that. Yes. Um, so I think I was just scrolling through reels one day and I saw all these blurry, timeless, out of focus images, which, you know, at first it was kind of like, oh, why would they do that? Like that that's an unusable photo. But now I'm like looking at it in a different way and I'm like, wow, like that was a real moment. Like that was maybe after the pose when they laughed out loud at how funny that pose was. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've learned to stop posing people and to shift more towards directing people. So instead of saying, okay, hold hands and walk this way, I'm going to say, all right, we're going to go for a walk. And that changes the dimension of the mm. pose, mm. you know, um, instead of saying, okay, now laugh. I say, okay, look around and say, Hey, yeah, I and love people when you, laugh, yeah. you know, cause Let's yeah. face it. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did the little, we were on the beach with my family doing a little photo shoot by ourselves. And I did the. You really quick want to interrupt the podcast to extend you an offer to join shoot the veil. Shoot the veil is a community of wedding photographers all coming together to help one another learn and connect and create and grow amazing businesses. If that is something that interests you, go to shoot the Make an account, use the promo code podcast to get your first month free and join the community of avid wedding photographers. Now, back to the podcast. What is it, what is it like, say, a, a, ki- a kitchen utensil or like your mm-hmm. favorite vegetable in your sexiest voice? Yeah. And my <laughs> wife cracked up. Like It, it was yeah. a, it was the best picture of right. the whole shoot, yeah. but See, I got that from you guys. Yeah. I always get my camera ready before I start that because yeah. I, I try to like direct that in a sense to where, okay, I want you to whisper a cereal brand in her ear. Yeah. You know, they're already laughing because they're like, huh, what? Oh, what? Yeah. And then I say, okay, a cereal brand, but you got to say it in a sexy way. And then right. they're already laughing. So sometimes me just saying it and breaking the ice a little bit yeah. is what's making them laugh. Yeah. Not necessarily him whispering raisin brand. <laughs> you know, that's great. That yeah. is not my favorite brand. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Usually when they say that, I get it. Cocoa Look, Puffs. <laughs> I'm a Captain Crunch, Captain Crunch Captain gal. Crunch. That's oh my, my favorite. God. Oh wow. Okay. So okay. So posing or, yeah. or guiding, not posing. Uh, uh, yes. We, we, what do we call it? Shift. We call that prompts. And there's poses and prompts. prompts yes. yeah. So you're prompting your couple. Hey, let's go on a walk. Versus hold hands, start walking, and look at yeah. each other. Yeah. I would I would say it feels more forced. The posing looks more posed when you tell them what to do versus saying, "Okay, let's go do this," or you know, adding a lot of movement helps as well. Yeah. So you know, it's a lot in editing to have to shift through all of those photos, but movement is key because the moment always happens after. The pose. The pose, the I feel moment. like. Yeah. That's really cool. You told me, Good. and I, I said, pause. I want to talk about this on the podcast when you came in. You said you had your first what? I did. I had my first ever unposed shoot. I was so nervous all day. I had butterflies in my stomach all day. And um, the couple was great. I mean, they are now like some of my best friends. Awesome. But, but so they asked for that. She did. Yeah. She reached out and she sent me all her inspo. It was all grainy, blurry, out of focus. Nothing like my work now, which is interesting that they trusted me to capture yeah. that um so yeah. she was like we want unposed we want to just go on a date and have fun and we just want pictures of it wow and i was like okay all right um whatever you know <laughs> i i know what i'm doing so i get there and you know i'm, I'm already starting to kind of pose them just a little bit and they're and she was like don't worry we're just gonna like stand yeah. at the bar and have a little drink right i was like okay cool so i had to kind of like take a step back and once i took that step back i realized like wow they are actually connecting without me saying hmm. connect mm. so that's yeah, so cool we just we went all around the city i mean I, they had an hour engagement shoot somehow it turned into two hours yeah but we were just having fun and i realized once i take a step back and just let the couple 
just be them, I realized, look how much happier they look. They don't look wow. forced to be here. He was happy. I mean, and you, if you can get a guy to like be happy while taking photos, yeah. sold. So <laughs> sold. It started at a bar. Started at a bar. I've actually, even if we weren't doing a bar shoot, I've had people go to a bar before our so shoot. You get a little relaxed. Yeah, <laughs> they just they laugh a lot more. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so what if I've tried that before and they just they actually didn't look comfortable because they're just being natural or, you know, they're just sort of sitting there talking. Yeah. And I'm like, if y'all would smile a little bit, this would be a warmer <laughs> picture. But yeah, how do you help them get into, okay, this is actually romantic and, nat and natural. How do you help them do that? So I would say we moved around a lot as we were walking from place to place, I would kind of get to know them a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I would find the things that maybe made them laugh. Um, I would crack jokes. I would, you know, just kind of open the ice, like break the ice, not open it, but break yeah. the ice a little bit to get them more comfortable. And this was the first time I'd ever met them. We had never done oh, a wow. phone call or anything. We had only texted. But even over text, like it was all capital letters, exclamation marks, <laughs> emojis. So I could tell the energy was there. We yeah. were connecting. Yeah. And that's one thing about me. I am not a professional professional. I will send you <laughs> 10 exclamation points because that's who I am. Mm -hmm. Right. So there and will be 10 like typos. That. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I would say if to answer your question without the long sentence, it's really about getting to know them and making them comfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So huge, which is a challenge, but that's what actually makes you a professional. It's not perfect texting. It's yeah. the ability to do that. It's way more in the head, way more in the heart. It makes it more personable. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That is really good. Now yeah. I want to go do that. I mean, I've, I've had a few shoots, like for example, I did, um, they wanted to do a museum and they wanted the blurry, f uh, yeah. they wanted like the, the um, I don't know, pride and prejudice, but like blurry feel yeah. kind <sighs> of, uh, and that doesn't work if you pose them. Like, and I mean, so in some I, I, poses. Exactly. Yeah. I was like, okay, I'm going to step back. And I want you guys just to have, I, and I still, I don't know if you consider it a pose. I'm like Eskimo kisses, okay? Yeah. So just rub your noses, like tickle each other's chins and go for a kiss. Um, but it was it was definitely fun because I'm much more, I like to be outside and, and have the golden hour, but I'm stuck in, in an environment with controlled lighting in a yeah. museum that I can't control. It was really fun, though, just to be a step back and let that happen. But, mm -hmm. Yeah, mm. I like I like the uh, whole unposed feel. Which well, even while I was editing their gallery, I, I was second guessing myself the whole time. I was like, is that too much grain? Is that too much blurriness? You know, yeah. how do you know when enough is enough? But I sent it over and I mean, they were blown away. Really? Nice. They were blown away. And the whole time I was so nervous. But that was the look that they were going for. Will you they post some care. of those on Shoot the Veil and let us kind of see? <laughs> I will. Yeah, I I'd love to see yeah, that. I sent them their sneak peek. Sneak peek gallery, I think yesterday morning. Yeah. And I okay. mean, I'm, I went home and immediately had to look through all those because I was so nervous. Mm -hmm. Like I knew they were going to be great, but I was nervous because it was a different kind of shoot than I'm used to. Would you, our comfort zone, yeah. Would you help me understand? Okay, so you show up. What do you set your camera to? What lens mm -hmm. are you using to accomplish what you're after? So for this particular shoot, when you're doing blurry images, I don't want them all to be blurry, so I would kind of shift back and forth between settings. Okay. So I would go for a low shutter speed, a higher f-stop, and then I'd adjust my ISO mm -hmm. to sure. whatever lighting. Um, What's your low? My low? On the shutter. 20? On the shutter? Is it 25? It, it's, I, I, I go 130, and then my f-stop was 3.5, depending yeah, okay. on the lighting where you're at. You kind of have to play around with it. Okay. I don't What's typically your focal go length lower than 50? 30. I was on a 24 to 70 because okay. yeah. I wanted wide. Yeah. I wanted to see the city. Okay. Um, but I also wanted the ability to be close. Yeah. You know. You're outside in daylight or is this at night? These were both. This was daylight okay. and it was super cloudy yesterday. So it, it almost rained. So you're yeah. at you're at a 30th of a second outside. Yeah. <laughs> three, five. How do you keep it from being way overexposed? So it was it was pretty dark already. So okay. yeah, you have to flip back between settings, and that's something because I second shot for about you know four years. 
I had the chance to really get to know my settings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that makes me a very versatile photographer. Sure. Anytime I second shoot, photographers always have different styles. They're either super warm, bright and airy, or true to color. Yeah. And I can do all of that because I've trained myself how to use my camera. Mm -hmm. Yes. Go. So, exactly. yeah, because they were wanting this moody look, I did a Kelvin. I underexposed slightly more than I normally would because yeah. I wanted to make sure I was keeping all of those like dark colors in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Keeping the highlights. Yeah. Good. That's fun. I'm always curious how photographers arrive at that shot. Was it an accident or how did they intentionally yeah. do it? I love that you're intentionally doing things with your camera. I've learned um, it's easier to do it in camera than figure it out in editing yeah. later. Yes. But yes. maybe that's just because I'm not an editing wizard yet. Yeah. Um, I actually texted my friend Andrew yesterday and I was like, hey, can you Photoshop these out for me? Yeah. <laughs> so he had to go in and Photoshop this bird scooter <laughs> and this yeah. like sign yeah. out. And then I got it back and he took the whole sign off of the trolley. He got rid of like the cars in the background. Like yeah. he got rid of everything in that image. And I was like, Wow. Okay, I need to learn this because yeah. that's. Have you played with the new generative film? I haven't, but he. That's what he did. He used the new AI, and I was blown away. Like I was like, you did that in like two mm. minutes, dude. Like, what wow. even? Yeah, crazy. Yeah, it, the editing world is insane. What's your What's your opinion on that? Oh, I love it. It's scary, okay. but it, I yeah, love it. Yeah. <laughs> and I was thinking about this. I don't know. I was just like in the shower last night, and I'm thinking, how scary is AI for photography? Yeah. And. I came to the conclusion is what if what if AI could paint me and my wife at Orion getting married? Would it be special to me? Mm. No, it just wouldn't. Yeah, it just wouldn't. And, and so that was very comforting to me because the new generative AI is so helpful. I was doing a headshot session here and we wanted full body, but we wanted to make this the, the background, which is a nine foot background, huge. Yeah, I saw that. And so I, I circled it out and I just said, generative fill, black background. Boom, and there it was. It does it. Amazing, yeah. five seconds. I think it's good thing and bad thing because okay. I think if the clients start finding out that there's this thing available, they're gonna start asking us just to Photoshop that out all the time. Yeah. Which is great. <laughs> Can you put me um, on a volcano? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, so that would be the scary part to me is if these clients find out, which mm. yes, I can Photoshop little things, but I don't wanna like, over perfect these images that didn't really happen. Mm, okay. Yeah. And I would have to upcharge for that. And that's yeah. what I say, like <laughs> a certain packages, okay, if you want to have this mastered or you want to have your, you know, yeah. perfect skin, yeah, that's we can do that, but each photo is $5 or something like okay. that. Yeah. And so would you send their gallery back first yeah, so and then let them decide or would you just ask them up front? You're a pixie set gal, right? Yeah. Okay. So pixie set, you have the favorite images. I'm like, okay, right. so go show me, I want you to highlight 20 images. Um, and if you want, just show me which one you want done and then we'll have them sent over and mm. we'll have them mastered. Wow. Just because, I mean, I was getting to what you can send, what's the place where you can send it off like a dollar fifty an image? You know what I'm talking uh, about? Uh, re retouch dot, retouch yes. up dot com or yeah, retouch that up, years yeah. ago. Hollywood yeah. Retouch yeah. Yeah. There's other things that I mean, um, Luminar, there's all these uh, different softwares that can really help you with that. Uh, yeah. But basically you want these done. Okay. It's $5 an image because truthfully told, I'm going to spend a lot of time going back into the session, having it sent mm -hmm. out, or if I'm doing it myself. Um, so, yeah, we would use the, the, the prompt of you're going to print this as yeah. our motivation to go in and do it. And we're charging a whole lot for prints. Yeah. So I would tell them these, this is your gallery. This is your album. This is awesome. But anyone that we put into an album or anyone that we print for you, we're going to do the master level retouching. Mm -hmm. So when it's hanging on your wall, there won't be a zit on your cheek. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's going to be perfect, but we're not going to take the zit out of, 800 pictures. No, right. exactly, exactly. So yeah, it is, going back to your question, is it something up front? It's not up front, it is on the back end when they're when mm -hmm. they're looking around and like, okay, so these are my favorite. And that's what I tell them, if you want something done, just let me know yeah. later on. So Right, because some people do don't. I've noticed that, like, even sometimes in editing, some people are like, hey, like, my face looks a little too smooth in this. Can we, like, yeah. bring my freckles back in a little bit more? Yeah. You know, and it, I didn't really mean to do it. It was just some of the editing style that I had already preset to mm -hmm. the image, you know? Right. And so I think I've learned to uh, try to keep it normal. And then if they ask for it, I just take it off. You know, sure. I just fix it. Nice. Yeah. yeah. That's okay. Good. That's good. What about, um, okay, as, we, as we're kind of pulling together principles that people can take out, I want to go back to this trend right now is this blurry thing yeah. and you've, you've figured out how to do it, how to do it well, how to lead them in it. Um, talk a little bit about photographers following these trends. Cause I think some people are early adopters, which you obviously are cause you were one of the first members of shoot the veil. 
you're an early adopter type of person. Um, but for those that aren't, would you encourage them to jump into trends quickly? And if I think you would, but why? Why would you encourage that? So I would never encourage anyone to go with the flow. I would okay. say to be yourself, but if you are noticing a decrease in booking, maybe <laughs> that's why, you know. And yes, interesting. So I would say the light and airy style is maybe going out of style a little bit. Mm. People want these more lived in, real, raw photos because that's what social media is posting and sharing right now. Um, it's a really big thing on TikTok right now and um, reels. People are wanting these behind the scenes images just yeah. to post because it's social media. People care what people think. Yeah. We had this conversation on Shoot the Veil, I guess it was a couple of days ago. And I think a lot of that is very important to stay up to date. And yeah, Light and Air is going out of going. I don't know, going out of style. And I and I don't necessarily like using that term. Yeah. yeah. Because maybe out of trend. Out of trend. Yeah. Let me say that out of trend. There's yeah. still a there's still a market for it. And um, but I think you have to play it right. Like there there have to yeah. be some images. Because in thirty years comes by, I feel like, you know, what's gonna happen. Are you, which one are you going to value the most? Which one are your right. children going to value the most? And I'm imagining it's probably the grand shot, which I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. But I mean, Who but knows? there's also nostalgia. And like yeah. we see stuff like the Kennedys running in the yard. It's this old black and white blurry image. And it's yeah. like the iconic image of the Kennedy kids running in the, in the White House yard. Mm -hmm. But the point is there are trends there. And I, what I'm loving about what you're saying, you don't have to give up your style. You don't have right. to give up... Um, delivering high quality images, but you should, in, you should be very aware to include things that people are wanting to share right now. Right. Even yeah. if you're correct that a, a perfect image is what you're gonna hang on the wall, they're wanting to share things right now that are trendy. Mm -hmm. And I always ask my clients up front, what's your vision? What vibe are you going for as far as location? Because I give my clients the option for a location, but most people don't really know where they want their photos at, but they have a vision. And so once I can understand their vision, I'm like, okay, they like the grainy, moody candidates. Mm -hmm. And then some people send me these bright and airy, beautiful post photos. I'm like, okay, they want the magazine photo. Like mm -hmm. they want those. Yeah. So it's really all about getting to know your clientele and what they like. You shouldn't Good. have to change your style, but if you can help adapt to the feel that your client is wanting, yeah. you could probably book more off of that. It makes I you a stronger that. photographer. Yeah. And that's definitely. Okay, yeah. so you've talked about a lot of great ways we can grow our business. What is one thing if you can leave us off with as a recap or something for a, a beginning photographer or someone who's trying to take this full time? What is something that you can leave them with today? Honestly, I think it would be to never give up. You have to consistently keep at it even if that means giving away free shoots, because you have to practice, practice, practice before you can get better. Um, business doesn't grow overnight. You, mm -hmm. you have to actually get out there and shoot and make connections. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying go make friends with every vendor you come across, but what I am saying is it's nice to have those people in your corner and you know find the people who really want to be in your corner not yeah. just are supporting you because you're this business person. So for me personally, the best advice I was ever given as a, you know, as a second shooter was to just keep meeting new people mm -hmm. and they will bring you more people in a sense. Connections mm -hmm. will take you further than anywhere else. Connections will take you further. Yes. Yeah. So it's, it's really all about connecting with people on a more personable level rather than just business, um, you want to become their friend. Yeah. You want to get to know them and their family. Mm. I mean, yeah. you want, you don't Find want to people. just be their photographer. Mm. You want to really connect with them on a different level so that they will keep trusting you with all these memories to come. Mm -hmm. That's Beautiful. great. Yeah. That's great. And one of those ways is you were, you were saying that find a support group, find a, the people that can yeah. help you in your area and find those, you know, 
yeah. people that got and shoot, your back. Shoot the Veil is a good place for that. Yeah. I mean, I've definitely connected with people over Shoot the Veil already. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah. That's one way we've become friends, really, is through really? The, yeah. the launch of it and everything over the past year. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Find find people in your city. Shoot the Veil and reach out to them yeah. and share it around. It's a great place to grow as mm-hmm. friends and as business yeah. owners and everything. Yeah. yeah. Never be afraid to reach out to another photographer and just Never. say, hey, I'm looking to learn. I'm looking to grow. Where yeah. can I start? Yeah. Some people will tell you. Some people won't. But the people Worst who thing won't, they, can say is no. they aren't. They aren't worth that trust. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's good. Well, keep pushing. It's yeah. fun watching you grow. You're thank you. And to encourage everybody, she's killing it, and she's only a couple of years in to like full time. Yeah, doing this. Crazy. Thirty weddings in your first full time <laughs> year. That's crazy. Good. Yeah, it's great. And I still second shot on top of that. So I mean, I would go oh, Friday wedding, Saturday wedding, Sunday wedding sometimes. Wow, killing it. So I mean, it, it's overwhelming. You have to. You have to definitely love what you do. Yeah. yeah. Not every day is going to be easy. You're going to be faced with a lot of challenges. But if as long as you love what you do, yeah. You know, you'll love your job. I would exactly. say too, though, and not. Not exactly what you said, and it's just a season. Yeah, you're not gonna do this this pace forever. Right. Yeah. There's a there's a season of planting, and that's the season you're in. You're planting lots of stuff, and like, oh, I can plant over here. I can plant over here, and I and you're constantly doing that. There is also a season of reaping, which would maybe be a few years later when you are only doing ten weddings and you're charging five times as much. Right. But right now, and it's an appropriate time in your career and in most people's career, Might you've got to well, yeah. work your butt off. You just got to get out there you and have to. do more than anyone yeah. else, and it'll come back to you later. It has, and it's paid off. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to say it's paid off because I'm starting to get noticed other places than yeah, just a yeah. session, you yeah. know? Yeah. You know, I've taken pictures of one person that led me to five others, and then those five others directed me to 10 others. Yeah. So it's it's really all about the connections you make with people and the kind of, like, what do you Group say? You're like in. The, yeah. Yeah. That's, That's amazing. Awesome. Well, Alyssa, thank you so much for being here mm-hmm. and yeah. imparting us with this wisdom and your experience. It's always a joy to see you, Donnie, you as well, and get to talk yeah. about all these amazing ways that we can grow our business and connect mm-hmm. with others and really just have fun, you know? Yeah. So guys, I appreciate you tuning in and watching this episode. If you guys are on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, I would really love it if you guys share the podcast and also give us a five-star review. Um, if you're not already, go ahead and go to shoottheveil.com and use the code podcast to get your first month free. We'd love to see you guys there and we'd love to be uh, meet with you over the live calls and talk with you in person. So mm-hmm. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and we'll see you guys next time.